Start recording. Oh, you got it. There you go. Okay. Um. Okay. Sif Yur. Uh, what do you say? You'd gimmel, right? You'd gimmel to your test. Uh, okay. Text, yeah, you'd gimmel to your Continuing, test. continuing in Hilkas Tefillin. So sheer, sheer Reichav Haratsuas. We're in Simen Yud, Simen Yud, Sif Yud Gimel. So sheer Reichav Haratsuas, the wet, the measurement of the width of the straps of the Tefillin, Bein Shal Reish, Bein Shal Yad. Whether the straps of the shalrosh or on the shalyad lepachos me oirech sa'ira that can be no less than the length of a barley, right? Which they say I don't know. This this farm only bring it in millimeters, eleven millimeters, nine millimeters, depending on you know the the grachnoi or the chazanish. That's the that's the width. This year it's pretty small. It's pretty small, pretty thin. The sheer arkon shal roish mi yamin umesmal, and the sheer and the length of the shal roish on the right and the left is aratar, meaning how long do the straps of the tefillin have to hang down? So that's that's aratar until the stomach, oil malam imenomat or slightly higher than the stomach. The yeshayim, the shal tzad yamin tagi al aramila. Some say that the right side, the strap, the right strap should at least reach the mila. That's the proper thing to do. The shell yad and the shell yad. How long do the straps on the shell yad have to be? Kadeshi yahadka, enough that you can tighten it around the arm. And then sheva krichas, and then to wrap it seven times alazroya on the arm, Vishalash Krichas Allah Etzva, and then three times around the finger, Vihaz can then make it tight. That's how long Lichatchila. The straps have to be, but if they're shorter than that, it's really it's also okay. The nifsiko ritsua, and if the ritsua gets broken, bain shall rush, bain shall yad, yasa shayla, then you have to ask a shayla is how much how far how far up or far down the straps did it become broken, and then uh that would uh that would or would, would depend. Fine. You dal it. Yizar shiyu ritsua is pizzara shakra lachutz. You have to be careful that the the black side of the straps should be facing outside meaning when you're looking at the person you should see the black part not the white part that's on the inner side although we did mention that there are some that nowadays have it black through and through in which case you don't have to be worried about this and if it happens that the straps turn over so that um it's the white is showing but not again, not on the part that's that's hanging down. We're talking about the part that goes around the head. So if it turns over that the white is showing and it stays like that, right? Or the white is showing on the arm, which sometimes that does happen because you can't see your arm. So right here, it can turn over. Right? Yasana, then a person has to fast. A yiftab it tzedakah. If he doesn't fast, then he should be paid it with tzedakah. Let's say somebody's tefillin fall on the ground. Not in the bag. You should fast. Which we don't do nowadays for the most part. Most places can say don't fast nowadays. We don't have the strength to fast. So if somebody drops the tefillin, you give tzedakah. That's if it falls not in its boxes or its bag. But if it falls in the bag, then then, then for sure you don't have to fast. Ella yitain eza dover le tzedakah, then just give a little bit of money to tzedakah. But if the actual tefillin falls on the ground, you have to give a lot more money to tzedakah. Uh, Tesvav im heiser as tefillin mipnei shetzarach leches lebeis akise. If he removes his tefillin because he has to go to the bathroom, so now do you need a new bracha or not? So kishachayz or manichon when you go back when you come back and you put the tefillin back on tzarach laaser lebarach aleyan. Um. And you have to go make a new bracha on them. It's very interesting. The Kitzvah Shechon Aruch just says you always have to make a new bracha on them. But the halacha is, for the most, most pais can end up saying that it depends why you remove them to the bathroom. If you went to the bathroom for ketanim, where theoretically you're allowed to urinate with the with the tefillin on, so therefore you don't need a new bracha. But if you want gedolim, then... You you'd have to make a new bracha. 
But the kitzer just says you always make a new bracha. Fine. Vim Imir be bracha shall kriya shema. But let's say you're in the middle of birchas kriya shema when you're not allowed to make a bracha because that's a hefzer. Da'anum in birchas yaitzer aru luhalon from the bracha of yaitzer aru and further. Lo yafsek be brachas. Then don't stop with the brachas. Shalat tefillin. Shalat yafsek be brachas. Shalat tefillin. Do not be masik with the brachas on the tefillin. Eli yanichan beloy brachas. You should put it on without without brachas. Right. And then, when you finish Manasseh, you mash mish behen, then you move them, and then you make a bracha on them. Because you can't, you can't make a bracha during Birchus Kriya Shema or during, during Shemanasseh. So you move them a little bit, and then you make the bracha. It says, Zion, Kozman Shatfilin Allah. So as long as the Tfilin are on you, this is a very, very difficult halacha to keep. As long as the tefillin are on you, you cannot stop thinking that you have the tefillin on you. Chutz mi b'shas tefillah shmen esrei v'tamotayra, except during davening shmen esrei and tamotayra. Then you can, you're can you allowed to think about the Torah and you're allowed to think about the davening. But other than that, when you have the tefillin on, you can't stop thinking that you have the tefillin on you. On, on you which is makes it that basically <laughs> we should take our tefillin off ASAP. I would think. Right, because it's very hard to concentrate on davening, much less concentrate that we have tefillin on us. And of course, you can't think about anything else when you have tefillin on. Fine. Also, lecha ben sudas keva, you're not allowed to eat a meal. So this comes up when you have like a little kiddush in shul after davening. So are you allowed to eat in your tefillin? So if it's a sudas keva, which means to wash on bread or to eat a lot of cake, not allowed. Avalachila sarai, but a temporary eating, mutter lecha ben it is motor to eat. Right? Felisha and Afilushina Sarai, but to sleep in Tfilin, even a, a, a small sleep, Asaban, it is also. Right? And many say you shouldn't. If you if we say you shouldn't talk when you're in your Tfilin, any mundane talk, which we saw a couple of days ago. So certainly you should not uh, I don't know if it's certainly, but you should not eat in them <clears throat> either. Fine, you'd Zion. Any time you remember about your tefillin, so you're supposed to feel them, um, just to keep the keep the reminder going. You won't come to hesachadas. I've seen people, educated people, that if they have to talk with their tefillin on, even if they're talking Torah, they'll put their hands on their tefillin so that they're reminded that they have their tefillin on. And they should behave themselves the way they talk. And you should feel first the shalyad, and after that, the shalrosh. And it's a proper minig. When you mention the mitzvahs of tefillin and kriyashima, it's good to feel them. When you say you tie them on your hand, you should feel the shalyad and then kiss. It doesn't say what you kiss. I'm assuming it means kiss your hand. When it's going to be between your eyes, which is the shalroish, then you feel the shalroish and kiss it. Fine. Yud ches. Mile because this will reading. We always we always upgrade in Hek Kaidish and we don't go down. Utfila Shalraish, the Tfilin of Shalraish, Kidushasa Gidaila Mishalyad. The the Tfilin of the Shalraish are holier than the Shalyad. Why? The Fishayeshpa Arbut Batim, because the Shalraish has four sections, four houses. The Gam Hashin, it has the shin on either side of the Shalraish. Right? Um the shin the on one side of Shalraish has four. The shin looks like it has four feet. I don't know if it's called feet, four arms, whatever. And the other side, it has three. Right? But the, the reason for that is because one of them is supposed to be, it's superimposed. It's supposed to look like it's superimposed. So in order to make a shin of three, you need to have four, you need to have four legs, which will then in the inside looks like three. Looks like a proper shin. Not that there's such a, there's, meaning there's no concept of having a shin that has four. Right? It's just a different version of the shin. So, right, so anyway, so the shalrosh is holier than the shalyad. Let's say you need a new ritzuas. You need a new straps of the tefillin. And it was on the shalrosh 
also you cannot take that straps, those tefillin straps, and make them in the shalyad, because that would be a downgrade. Of a shalyad, but if a shalyad, but a shalyad, you are allowed to make it into a shalrosh. Even and even within a shalyad. So where is the main place? There's two places that the Ritsuas usually get a little ruined. One is way up on the top by the knot, because wherever there's a lot of chafing and a lot of movement, that's where it gets worn down. So or and it gets worn down and it can get cut. So either up by the shalyad or down by the fingers. So if Ritsua Shalyad Shinifzikolamala, it got broken on the top, Eitzel Lakesha next to the knot, for Rightzilahovkan, he wants to turn it around. Shiasa'ata Kesha Bakotza Achran, because now he wants the knot to be on the other end, on the end. Also, you can't do that. Elatarak Lasis a Kesha Bakotza Shinifzikasham, you have to just pull the whole strap up from where it broke, meaning you can't flip it. Fechem Ritsua Shalroish. Same thing with the straps of the shalrosh. Also, the the part of the the part of the the tefillin, the ritzuas, the straps that is goes through the shalrosh is holier than the other parts of the straps. So, since it's holier, you can't decide to flip the straps and and put what was not under the tefillin or in the tefillin um, into the tefillin and vice versa. Well, the one that was not under, you could put in there, but you can't take the one that was under the tefillin and put it not in the tefillin. So again, um, And then the same thing, uh, what what was in the knot, uh, what's that, did I tie shit right? Uh, no. I'm sorry, I said what's going through the tefillin. It's talking about what's in the knot, because the knot has the chashivas. So what's in the knot has to stay in the knot. You can't pull it out. But you could adjust it. That the place can say you could you could adjust it. Fine. Kiss, shasoy, lahachsik by tefillin. If you have a bag that somebody, you're a tefillin bag. Vagam hechsikun boy, and meaning you made it as a tefillin bag and you actually used it, as opposed to just making it as a tefillin bag and you didn't actually use it. Shuv also l'shtamash b'kis zed davar shachul and you're not allowed to use it for chulin. Meaning, you have a tefillin bag and now after your tefillin you got a new tefillin bag. So what do you do with your old tefillin bag? So you can't use it for tzedakah. You can't use it to put in put in things mundane things because it has kedusha from the tefillin. So you can't you can't do anything with it. So what about putting a siddur inside of it? So that's that's expected. That's a normal expected thing to do. So. That's okay, but the best thing would be is when you first buy the tefillin before you put the tefillin, but when you first buy the bag and you put the tefillin into the bag, you should have in mind that you're also going to use it for for other things. Fine. Ein lachlis is a tefillin, you test. Ein lachlis is a tefillin ad achik kedushas of alatzian. You are not supposed to take off the tefillin until after the kadosh, 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 that's in uvalatzian. Because you want, you want to be able to have Three Kadeshin with the Tefillin on. The Kaddish, Kaddish, Kaddish of Birchus Kriya Shema and the Kaddish, Kaddish of Kedusha and the Kaddish, Kaddish of Avalotzian. So you want it all on for that. The Mikobolim say it should be on even for the Kaddish after Avalotzian. That's Nusuch Svard. Right, so on a day... Meaning, if you're going to Ashkenaz, so either way, Uvalotzian is after the Sefer Torah is put away. But according to Nusuf Svar, where Uvalotzian is before the Sefer Torah is put away, then, not only do your Tefillin have to be on for Uvalotzian, they should also be on until the Sefer Torah gets put away. Simen Ladover, Simen to remember that is Vayavor, Malcolm, Lifnehem, Hashem Barosham. They pass the king in front of them. And Hashem is Barosham. So meaning tefillin is like on your head when the when the king, meaning the Torah, is walking by. For some reason, most people don't keep this. Probably because like we said before, it's very hard to have on tefillin. And then there's a bris and everybody's waiting around and everybody's schmoozing, right? So that's I'm assuming that's why people don't keep this halacha. But 
On a day that there's a bris, ain't lachlitz ad acharamila. You're not supposed to take off the tefillin until after the bris. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein has a chuba about this. He says the reason is because the boy, meaning to, uh, men are supposed to have two oisias at all times. So the bris is one, an ice that we're yidin. And the other ice is, at least every day, have an ice, is tefillin. And when on Shabbos and Yom Tif, the ice is Shabbos and Yom Tif, right? That's why we don't wear tefillin on Shabbos and Yom Tif, because we have two ICS. We have the bris, and we have Shabbos and Yom Tif. But, uh, um, but the boy, the baby boy, doesn't have bris. So we're supposed to keep on our tefillin as an ice until he has his bris. Once he has his bris, then we can take off the tefillin. Huh? Fine. So according to that, you can take off the tefillin after the bris. Um, you, you can take off the tefillin after the bris is done, even before the bracha, seemingly. For Rosh Chodesh, on Rosh Chodesh, Chalten, Kaidim, Tefillas, Musaf, we take off the tefillin before Tefillas, Musaf. Right? And that's really because we say Keser, which is a crown. So we say with, with, we're crowning Hashem, so we don't need really to have a crown with tefillin. So Rosh Hashkenaz, it doesn't say Keser, shouldn't really have this issue. Okay, but we take off the tefillin. The Cholomoyet Sukkis, this interesting din on Cholomoyet Sukkis, Kulam Chalts and Kaidim Halal. Everybody's supposed to take off the tefillin before Halal. Over Cholomoyet Pesach, Hatsibur Chalts and Kaidim Halal. But on Cholomoyet Pesach, the Tzibur takes it off before Halal. But Shri Hatsibur, Acher Halal. The Shri Hatsibur does it after Halal. Why? So on Cholomoy Yitzukis, you've got to take off before Halal because everybody has to take it off because you can't hold the Lulav and Esrug when you have Tefillin on because it's a separation, right? So even to the Chaz, even the Chazan has to take it off. I think, I think that's Pshat. And also the Chazan has time when everybody's gathering the Lulav and Esrug, so the Chazan has time to take it off. And on Pesach, he doesn't have time to take it off because you have to start Halal right after. Meaning there should be no break. The point here is that there should be no break from after Chazor Sashatz until for Halal to start. So much so that the Chazan, who's wearing tefillin, in a minion that wears tefillin on Cholomoyed, shouldn't take off his tefillin until after Halal, so that there shouldn't be a break. Seems to be that the minion in all places that I was at is that uh, they uh, they take it off during Chazor Sashatz. Unless you have a separate minion. If you have a separate minion, then you don't then you then you leave it on to left it with our shots. Okay, we will stop there. Thank you very much. Everybody should have a fine night. We should hear Basura's Tavis. The not putting um not like a sitter in a filling bag. That's that's just the bag itself.